Um, DK Metcalf is an absolute freak athlete, and what an effort play by him. I mean, that's high school coaches to be showing that one for years. Uh, just don't give up on a play. But. That's what Cliff Kingsbury says. What does Swagoo say? Damn, Cliff, I'm right there with you. I was thinking, where are his other two legs? Because that is not a human <laughs> running down Buda Baker. That looks like a horse coming out the gates, running down a normal human being. DK Metcalf <laughs> is not normal. And, G, when it happened, I tweeted out, it ain't no way DK Metcalf ain't from Wakanda. <laughs> It is, it is one of my favorite plays of the NFL season. You can't stop watching it. It's kind of like the stiff arm that it's Derrick Henry had. It's, it's so spectacular. Let's just keep it going. I don't even want to get to the next one until we see him all the way down I mean, the field. Remember, this. this is a guy who gave up on a play well, and didn't score a touchdown earlier in the season now makes the ultimate hustle play. Okay, that's a great one. Tonight, so the Rams look good. On the other side... Don't the believe Bears, the hype! <laughs> the Bears, not so much. Jay's phrase there might sum up Chicago really, really well. Let's get to the meat of the issue of potential miscommunication between Nick Foles and his head coach, um, Matt Nagy. This was brought up by Brian Greasy last night on the broadcast. Listen to Greasy here when he talks about the challenges of Foles and Nagy trying to get on the same page play calling wise. We were talking to Nick Foles yesterday and he said, you know, sometimes play calls come in and I know that I don't have time to execute that play call. And, you know, I'm the one out here getting hit. And sometimes the, the guy calling the plays, Matt Nagy, he doesn't know how much time there is back here. And so that's something that they have to get worked out. As you might expect, that raised some tremendous eyebrows. Nagy was asked about it after the game, sort of tamped it down, said you got to talk to Nick about it. I don't really think that's the case with me and Foles. We have a great relationship. Foles, if he had a miscommunication with Matt Nagy, Foles also said, I must have had a miscommunication with Brian Greasy. Listen to this. That was definitely a miscommunication with Brian and I. Um, you know, we do these pregame um, conversations the day before the game just to give them information. Um, that conversation, uh, Coach Nagy and I have a great, great conversation on the, the sidelines. So there might be times where we, we go through it beforehand and say, hey, what do you think? And there's times where you got to get the ball out quick and whatnot. But um, in those situations, like Matt and I have a great relationship on the sideline with con conversations and everything. I think, you know, in that situation with Brian, it was just a miscommunication of words because that's not what um, I was trying to uh, bring across in that conversation. Key? I, I, you know, the, the the interesting thing for me is I hate to go against a colleague in Brian Greasy, but Nick Foles is 100% correct. And and I don't need to hear Brian Greasy in, in, or Nick Foles, for that matter, try to explain to us exactly what the conversation was. I, the words were probably to a degree, hey, I wish I had a little bit more time or or in, in Brian probably, you know, put it in his own words. And, and that's and that's what they do. When you can go around the league and you can go to every single team, both in the run game as well as in the pass game, and there are plays that are on that call sheet that coaches are kind of fascinated with, fixated with. They just kind of want to, you know, call it and, and feel good about it, even though it may not necessarily be the best play at that particular time or throughout the game. They continue to keep doing it because one thing is right. They're not in the cockpit, so they're not sitting back there dropping back to be able to tell what the rush looks like. They got to get a feel from the sidelines, or they may not understand right then and there that the protection is, has broken down and there's no answer for Aaron Donald, even though they may think that there is. When you're calling a game and the flow of the game as an offensive coordinator, and we could also have a conversation with Todd Haley, former head coach of the Kansas City Chiefs, office coordinator of Cleveland Browns, who's going to be joining us later, about this, is that there's plays – in your call sheet that you just stick with, even though the guy may be getting, you know, beat down. They just will call them because eventually it comes around as a positive in a run game as well, where we all sit at home and we say to them, ourselves, Jay, why is he calling that play? Hmm. I don't It's two yards. <laughs> They're not getting anywhere. It's like, eventually it's going to pop. And sometimes that happens like that. So, you know, you, you got to think that Matt Nagy, along with, with Nick Foles, kind of know exactly what it is that they want to do from an offensive standpoint and feel good about it. Well, they kept Chicago to 49 yards on the ground. So, and he got sacked. Nick Foles got sacked four times. Let, let's just Well, you're going to get sacked four times with Aaron Donald in that front. Agreed. So let's just call this what it is, Key. The Bears are who I thought they were. 
right? Like, did this look like a team that can outrace the Green Bay Packers to the NFC North title? No. Does this truly look like an operation with enough offensive potency to hold on to a wild card into January? I don't know. No. I don't know. Look, their O-line is decimated. Lewis Reddick said it during the, the Monday Night uh, Football broadcast. He said, look, you can't make players bigger, faster, and stronger, and when the defense can't get you points, you're going to be in trouble. And I said it before, this three-game skit they have coming up at Rams, they play the Saints next, and then the Titans, we're going to find out everything we need to know about this team. Defensively, they are good, but offensively, they are inept. He, he, here's what I would say about Chicago. They play the Ram team. That's, that's a good Ram. The Rams are good. They're a good football team. But the Rams laid an egg up in San Francisco a week ago. So you wasn't sure what that was. They went two, three weeks ago and got beat in Buffalo after playing the Giants and then going back to L.A. and coming all the way back there. The Chicago Bears next, what are we, next month, I mean next week will be November. Mm -hmm. Week eight. The weather will start to change. They'll be at home. When the wet, in Chicago, when you play outdoors, this formula for them, which is try to run the football, limit your mistakes, which Nick Foles had two interceptions last night, so that hurt him, and play defense in that weather is portable. So I'm not ready to say that they're not a legitimate team. So they have to win ugly. That's, every but that's game who they are. If you go all the way back, if you go all the way back, to 1985, and you go to Mike Dicker and the Chicago Bears, the style, not ugly, but just the style, defense, hard nose, run the ball with sweetness, and McMahon can throw a few check downs here and there. Or you fast forward to Rex Grossman and Lovey Smith. Rex Grossman, man. I'm with Stop. you. That was the defense that did that, and they ran the ball solid. Mm -hmm. That's what you're looking at. So how good are the Rams at 5-2? and two? Our Dr. Pepper call-in.